Hello, Paul Wilkinson here. In this video, I'm going to talk about one concept that will unlock some possibilities for you to explore uh, from this wonderful book, A Theory of Harmony by Ernst Levy. <clears throat> the idea of this video is to unpack just one little concept that he talks about early on in the book. It's his major concept that everything comes from. Um, so it, it's fascinating and when you see it, you'll run with it and you'll explore some beautiful harmonic chord progressions. So the thing about this book is it's quite hard to penetrate at first. Uh, some of the language he uses is quite philosophical, uh, but it is a very rich book. So in this video, I'm hoping to distill it down. This is something I've taught with my students um, a lot over the years uh, and we'll have dipped in and out of. So I'm hoping that... Um, in fact, I've been doing it the last few weeks, talking with my various students about these concepts. And when one teach, two learn. So you, you learn a lot from your students and hopefully I can distill it down into the, the essence of what his idea is. Um, so, OK, so the first thing to remember with this is that Ernst Levy bases the idea on this kind of harmonic dualism. So there you can see we have the overtones. We've got the C at the bottom, which is the first, then the second, the fundamental note, then the second, the third, the four, five, and six. Now the four, five, and six give us, you might not hear that, but they are ringing those notes sympathetically, the overtones of that note of the harmonic series. So there we have a C chord, and that is where Ernst Levy bases this theory of harmony. And basically he says that every major chord has a reciprocal chord. If you think about a plant grows, there's also a plant growing that way and the opposite direction. So we could think of this as kind of harmonic dualism, if you like, a reciprocal, a mirror. The buzzword that Jacob Collier used a few years ago was negative harmony. Negative harmony with Herbie Hancock. Yeah. So what is that? Oh, sh um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so this it's funny. That's kind of linked to the last question. But this guy Ernst Levy, um, he wrote a book a, a few years ago, like a, a few decades ago, um, called A Theory of Harmony. and He's from Europe or something. And this book, it's like a classical composition book from quite, uh, you know, I, I guess, long enough ago that jazz education wasn't a thing. So he thinks very classically about things. But his idea is that harmony um, can exist. And any, any chord in any key has, like a, has, a, has a reflection, a, a, a polar opposite. Um, negative harmony is not mentioned in the Ernst Levy book. As far as I understand it, some of the New York musicians were taught that kind of terminology that every major chord had this polarity, this minor chord and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video and I'm going to try and unpack that. So in a way we could borrow some words from philosophy like uh, metaphysics or ontology. This is kind of aiming towards trying to find a fundamental truth, removing as many concepts as possible to, to, to kind of come out from a generator function uh, as, a, as a great, um, as a great Rupert Spira says, um, any honest model of reality should start with awareness and to start from anywhere else is to build a model on the shifting sands of belief. Uh, if only we could do that in our society. Yeah, but anyway, this is a music video. But uh, so this is what this is what Ernst Levy is looking at. He's trying to find a generator function like coming towards whatever truth may mean as low down as possible as we can to find an actual truth and to find this chord here, this C triad. He then talks about the reciprocal version of that chord and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about uh, in this video. We've got to remember uh, all concepts are kind of quite, um, are very very useful as they are, are actually somebody else's theorem. They're quite, you know, they, you, you might suggest that they're, they're quite dead in a way, some of them. So the, there's other names you can call this chord but if you're going to stick in the world of this theory, Ernst Levy says it's a reciprocal chord which is a minor chord. So here's C major. C, E, G. The intervals of that, and you'll see me unpack this when I do a close-up video on this, are a major third and a minor third. And basically, the Ernst Levy concept early on in one of the early chapters is to flip that chord with the same intervals, but build it from this centrifugal point and find, see what chord you find. So major third, become major third, become minor third. And as you'll see shortly in the video when I explore it even more, we end up with an F minor chord which some people would use, say, was a minor four chord. Yes, but maybe not in the Ernst Levy concept. So in this video, 
I'm going to show you how to explore that C major chord and then its reciprocal chord or its reflection or its inversion or its earthly chord, its negative chord, whichever words you want to use, mirror chord, and then you'll see me explore playing the chord of C major, F minor, C major, F minor, C major and F minor and so on. And then you'll find that I continue round the circle of fifths, as you can see there in front of you, minorizing the circle going down. So not round the clock, but anti-clockwise. So you'll see me then going C major, F minor, but I'll also intertwine the major and make that C major, C minor as well. So you'll also see me go C major, F minor, B flat minor, E flat minor, A flat minor, and I'll probably go as far as D flat minor, or maybe even to G flat minor, or F sharp minor, harmonically, and harmonics, depends. So I'm hoping in this video to distill some of the complexities around this book um, and hope that it helps you unpack that. So without further ado, let's look at some of the concepts and some ideas that I'll show you now in the video that you can take away and practice. And don't forget, you know, there's not just one truth. Uh, concepts can be can be useful, but they can also, uh, you need to find your own truth. You need to own it in yourself. And this, all these things might just open a portal to another universe harmonically for you to explore. And you find when I teach my students this, they do find this very rich to get into their own compositions and their improvisations. So without further ado, let's have a look at that now. Okay, so here's a quick recap. There is the C major chord, which is a major third and a minor third. If you want to count in semitones, if you're a bit unsure about your major and minor thirds, you might count it one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So then you take this point here, we, like we said earlier, you call it the centrifugal point, if you like. And what we're going to do is then flip this chord to find a reciprocal version of that chord built upon the same intervals we've already got here. So don't forget, we've got a major third there and a minor third there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, if we're counting in semitones. So we're now going to flip this chord round the other way and find this um, opposite chord, if you like, this reciprocal chord. Just as plant grows, um, trees grow up and the opposite direction would be the roots. This is when you found the word, as I mentioned earlier, negative harmony, so the opposite or we might refer to it as mirror harmony as well. So there's the C chord. Let's build it backwards then. So one, two, three, four, five. A flat, one, two, three, four. We end up with F minor. There we have the F minor chord. So now here's the first part of the exercise. All I want you to do is to play a C chord and then play F minor. So you're playing the C and the F minor and coming back. Try it in a different place. I'm going to hold the C here. Okay, now I'm going to do a combination of C's and F minors. C, F minor, C, F minor. Now I'm going to put some bass movement. So there, I would just go in between the major and, if you like, the reciprocal minor, the negative version of the C chord to the F minor like that. And so I was moving between C, F minor and C. So, first point which is quite interesting about this is you can actually swap the major and the minor. So watch this, I could go C, F minor, C minor. Because I started with C major, so watch, C major, F minor, C minor. That's a really nice thing to try. So I'm going to play, I'm going to now go C, F minor, C minor. So C major, then F minor, then C minor, then I'm going to stick a G chord, a 5 chord. That 7th note there, that T, I want to go T, Do. Try a variation of that. C minor, G, C major, F minor, C minor. You could have even had a G chord there. C minor, G, C, F minor, G, C minor or C major. Let's go minor. 
So let's just quickly recap that. I was going with a C major chord, then going to the minor, and then cadencing instead of coming back to the major with the minor. So this is the idea of the polarity between the major and the minor chord. So you can just swap them around, see see what you see what you get, see uh, what comes out that's creative. Okay, so now then let's take this a little bit further. So if we find back at C again, and then if we find our mirror chord, our negative chord from the centrifugal point, from uh, this, this point here, we find F minor. Now, if we think about that F minor, let's build another, build on the major though from this point, so don't get lost here. I'm still building them from the major even though I played the minor, so be careful here, look here, C major. Then I go to F minor. Now I'm gonna take that as my new centrifugal point, but think of it as a major chord. I will then end up with a chord of B flat minor. So now I've got three chords in the pot. I've got C major, F minor, B flat minor. Those are my three chords again. C major, F minor, B flat minor. Okay, you'll start to notice now that I'm actually going round the circle of fifths, playing minor versions of the chords. Okay, so there you can see on the screen there, C is at the top major, but then I've just minorized that circle of fifths. I've done a few videos of, about that and I've put some links at the end of this video. So here I go now, C, F minor, B flat minor. I could keep going, E flat minor, a flat minor, D flat minor, C sharp minor, G flat or F sharp minor. I could trace my way back then. So this is a good practical exercise to try. It's to start going round the circle of fifths traveling around, minorizing the chords. So if you take C as your major chord that you're gonna cadence back at, C major, what's next? Think about it a second. Correct, F minor. What's next after F minor, a fifth lower? Correct, B flat minor. A fifth below the B flat, E flat minor. A fifth below that, A flat minor. A fifth below that, correct, D flat minor. You could keep going round. I'm going to trace myself back. So you could spend some time, you can spend a lot of time just playing a different chord of C, going to the minor, and you might go to a different B flat minor. Then when you go to the E flat minor, where are you going to go? Maybe you could go here. Lovely, and then come back. F minor. And it depends how far around the circle you go. Uh, here I'm just going to do a similar thing. I'm going to start with F minor, but I'm going to play the third of the chord. So I'm going to play, let's see, I'll play the A flat on the bottom. Have a listen to this. So here we go. Then I put the B flat minor in. Then the F minor. Then the C over E. The F minor. I'll maybe have a C over G here, a C chord. And then the G chord. Okay, so you could play the chords in the left hand and then use the guide tones in the right hand. So when I say that, I mean notes from the chord. just cadence with the C. Okay, let's try. I'm going to go that. So I'm just going to go around C major, F minor, B flat minor, E flat minor, A flat minor, and maybe even to D flat minor, and then come back around just improvising around that. Back. 
So there you go, you can see the concept and I hope you'll agree, you can hear how beautiful it sounds. So about four or five years ago, as I said, Jacob Collier started talking about negative harmony. He mentioned uh, this Ernst Levy book. I did, I've done three videos talking about negative harmony. Um, and I did them a number of years ago when Jacob started talking about uh, these topics. All these theory videos are wonderful to explore. That's Jacob Collier, if you're not familiar with him. Um, but I remember that I'd read that book 20 years ago. And then I discussed it with my old teacher. And because he mentioned, what's people talking about negative harmony? And I, and I explained it. He went, oh, it's the Ernst Levy book. I used to talk to you about all that, uh, all my students, but none of you were, were listening. <laughs> I think I was listening. I do remember him talking about it. And so I reread the book sort of five, six, seven years ago. And um, what I've just done today is just to unpack some of those concepts that you can try in your plane. Um, there's not just one truth and I've only just uh, scratched the surface. But I, I do hope you find um, this helpful. I may, well, I may well touch upon this book again with some other concepts because uh, it's very, it's a very rich book. But I do feel it had missing some practical applications. So... I just hope there you can see how practically you can go explore it yourself. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, uh, please. That really helps my uh, YouTube channel. And bye for now.